now uh, we are starting the conceptual videos on digital communication uh, before we start the topic uh, we introduce uh, uh, the topic and uh, relate uh, the topic with the previous study uh, which we have uh, done and uh, put up the videos on our website uh, we have seen that uh, analog uh, communication uh, has been covered uh, in three conceptual videos uh, where the part one was amplitude uh, modulation part two was on the angle modulation and part three was on noise okay and uh, the uh, we start with the digital uh, communication uh, this uh, will cover in two conceptual videos <coughs> part one will be on pulse modulation and part two will be on digital modulation so present video is the part one of the digital communication uh, uh, and this video is on the analog and digital uh, pulse modulation as is obvious uh, from the uh, slide the topic uh, we have seen uh, in analog communication or analog modulation that the carriers were sinusoidal while in the pulse modulation the carrier is uh, pulse strain and uh, modulating signal uh, uh, is analog or digital or it could be analog signal converted to digital form uh, if it was analog ok so uh, in pulse uh, modulation carrier is pulse strain and uh, some parameter of it is varied in a, according to the modulating signal uh, schemes uh, uh, which are prevalent uh, are uh, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse uh, time modulation and uh, pulse time modulation is divided into pulse uh, width modulation and pulse uh, position modulation. Ever modulation uh, schemes uh, come under the analog pulse modulation uh, schemes and uh, we also sometimes call them discrete modulation why it is discrete because here the time axis is digital while the amplitude axis is analog ok that is uh, to get a digital signal from this amplitude axis should also be made uh, discrete ok it is done using the uh, quantization and coding and then we get the pulse code modulation the advantage uh, uh, is that uh, uh, the these uh, digital signals uh, have uh, uh, the advantages that uh, we can detect uh, these signals in the presence of noise uh, and uh, this uh, PCM scheme which will be covered uh, uh, in this conceptual video is uh, a fully digital scheme. So, we will uh, start uh, uh, with the presentation now. Uh, this is uh, the uh, topic uh, that analog and digital pulse modulation techniques. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, what is the we said uh, try to see what is the need for this uh, uh, because uh, the need is that uh, most of the signals uh, which are available in modern uh, communication systems are digital nature because we have uh, uh, so many digital uh, uh, techniques available with the development of uh, microprocessors, computers and uh, microelectronics 
uh, the integrated circuits uh, which are available in digital form are more easily available and uh, cheaper also. So, uh, we are uh, rather moving from analog uh, uh, communication part to digital uh, uh, communication. Uh, even if the signal is analog, we transmit it digitally, that means convert into digital form and then transmit it. Uh, this advantage we have already seen this reduces distortion and the improvement in the signal to noise ratio is obtained uh, with these uh, techniques. We uh, just like a summary like uh, there are three uh, schemes pulse amplitude modulation, pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation. They are said to be like analog modulation techniques and pulse code modulation, delta modulation other schemes. Uh, which come under the uh, I would say the fully digital schemes. Uh, we had seen that uh, in sub C w modulation uh, that uh, the, some parameter modulated wave of varying like amplitude, frequency or phase. Uh, uh, in uh, analog modulation uh, here in analog pulse modulation here some parameter of each pulse is modulated or varied uh, by a particular sample value of the message. Okay. So, uh, now we will see this pulse modulation of two type. So, these uh, analog uh, pulse modulation, these are three uh, types of modulation schemes uh, which we have seen like pulse amplitude, pulse width uh, and pulse position and these are the digital modulation schemes, pulse digital modulation schemes like pulse code modulation, delta modulation. Uh, this is uh, PM and this uh, high frequency carrier is uh, that is the pulse uh, is varied in accordance with the sample value with the message signal. This pulse width modulation here the width of the pulse is varied and pulse position modulation is the position of the pulse is varied. It is observed that uh, PPM, PPM scheme is more effective uh, of pulse analog uh, modulation schemes in terms of signal to noise ratios. Okay. Now, uh, uh, this is anyway a presentation just comparing the uh, these uh, modulation schemes like this is the modulating signal which is sinusoidal in nature. In the pulse uh, modulation here, uh, you notice here that uh, depending upon the amplitude of the uh, this signal uh, pulse amplitude is smaller if this amplitude of the modulating signal is larger pulse amplitude is larger similarly here this is smaller and so on. So, this is pulse amplitude modulation you can see similarly pulse width modulation that uh, means uh, width of the pulse uh, depends upon the amplitude of the modulating signal and this is uh, pulse position modulation position of the pulse depends on the amplitude of the modulating signal and then pulse code modulation this is this is about the pulse code modulation here pulse code modulation we have all uh, the digital data 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 and so on. Okay. Now, uh, now we uh, go over to pulse code modulation or PCM schemes and uh, regarding these uh, uh, pulse and log modulation uh, schemes uh, uh, which is uh, very commonly used with uh, line coding. Uh, we will see towards end of this lecture uh, that uh, how these schemes are used. This pulse code modulation scheme is very, uh, very common in use and uh, you would uh, observe that good number of problems uh, do come in this uh, topic. So, should we very thorough about this. So, we can see uh, uh, first, first what we do is in PCM is in PCM analog signal is first sampled then it is uh, quantized and uh, convert into levels that is uh, quantized means convert into levels and then it is encoded. So, these are the three processes which are involved in the uh, pulse code modulation. So, before the sampling of the signal it is uh, first 
filtered to limit the bandwidth that is one part you should remember now the start with the we start with the first process that is sampling this process of converting analog signal into discrete uh, signal what is discrete signal that means when there is analog signal and uh, we sample the analog signal we will get discrete signal because in time axis it will be digital but amplitude axis it will be analog that means no quantization so sampling is common in all pulse modulation techniques uh, so we signal uh, we sample the signal to regular interval and uh, uh, each sample is proportional to amplitude of the signal at that instant of time analog signal is samples as uh, ts seconds uh, called the sampling interval and uh, fs sampling frequency is 1 over ts is called sampling rate uh, this is very important relation that uh, sampling rate or uh, sampling frequency should be twice fm fm is the minimum sampling rate uh, this is the minimum sampling rate uh, which should be there to recover the signal and this rate is called the nyquist rate this you will be use, be using very frequently and uh, the sample spectrum g omega is repeating periodically without overlapping in this case if the sampling frequency is uh, less than this then the overlapping will occur original signal is centered at omega 0 and having the if you see the spectrum centered at omega 0 and having the bandwidth omega m the spectrum can be recovered by passing through low pass filter okay for fs less than twice fm sample spectrum will overlap and cannot be recovered back and this is said to be the aliasing okay now sampling uh, we can see there is a what are the different methods for sampling uh, there is an ideal sampling where an impulse uh, at each sampling instant uh, this we can see the ideal um, this an ideal uh, impulse and we are sampling it with uh, ideal impulse and taking the amplitude of the analog signal at these instants of time okay then natural sampling a pulse of short uh, width that you can notice here the pulse of this this width here this is the width of the pulse and this is is sampling the analog signal so this is the natural sampling and the other type of sampling is flat types flat top sampling is just sample and hold uh, so that the uh, sample level top level is held to a particular value like natural uh, it's like a natural sampling but will uh, with a single uh, amplitude value because the amplitude does not change in the range why here we could not to see an amplitude is different at different uh, points of this uh, pulse so this is a flap top sampling method okay now uh, so far uh, we have seen that uh, if the signal is uh, low pass type then uh, what should be the sampling uh, frequency here the sampling of a band bus band pass signal if the sampling is to be done for band pass signal we are we can find the what should be the minimum bandwidth band pass signal of uh, bandwidth 2 fm can be completely recovered from its samples then um, the minimum sampling rate should be 2 into bandwidth 2 into bandwidth is 2 fm the 4 fm so range of the sampling frequencies is in the range of 2 into bandwidth to 4 into bandwidth that means if you sample within this range you will be able to recover this signal back instantaneous sampling or impulse sampling uh, sampling function is strain on impulses the spectrum remains constant throughout the figuring it is not practical we cannot have such type sampling natural sampling the spectrum is weighted uh, by a sync function if you see the spectrum the spectrum is weighted by sync function amplitude of high frequency component reduces and the third one is the flat top sampling that's uh, very common here top of the sample remains constant that we have seen in the spectrum high frequency components are attenuated due to sync pulse roll off here also high frequency components are uh, reduced and this effect is called an aperture effect and it's noted a pulse width increases aperture effect is more that is more attenuation of high frequency components that means uh, if the pulse width 
as width of the pulse uh, which is a flat top flat top type if it is more then it will have uh, attenuation of more high frequency component that is more of uh, aperture effect will be coming now the second process is the quantization uh, quantization is sampling uh, uh, results in series of pulses of varying amplitude between two limits because now the voltage is within that two limits and we want to divide that uh, range of voltage into different smaller uh, ranges steps so amplitude values are infinite uh, between two limits and we map these to a finite set of values okay and this is achieved by dividing the distance between minimum and maximum into l zones and each height of delta so maximum voltage minus minimum over the l so we divide this uh, that gives me the delta uh, here we uh, these are the quantization uh, levels how they are selected you can midpoint uh, of this zone is assigned a value of uh, 0 to L minus 1 and uh, here you can find the difference this is set to be a mid red uh, type where 0 is also available 0 volts here 0 volts is not available because that particular level is not 0 even this is not 0 so that is set mid rise so mid red uh, for odd number of uh, levels you use uh, this kind of quantization and uh, for mid rise uh, uh, you use for even number of uh, levels okay now uh, we just uh, taken just a simple example here uh, suppose we have a voltage uh, of v minimum of minus 20 volts and v max of plus 20 volts uh, we want to use L equals to 8 quantization levels the zone is uh, you can say 20 minus minus 20 divided by 8 5 so 8 zones are available so we divide these 8 zones into minus 20 to minus uh, 15 minus 15 minus 10 minus 10 and so on the 8 zones and the midpoint of zone is decided here so this is the way you can do quantization now uh, assigning codes to zone that's another important part uh, now each zone is then assigned a binary code the number of bits required to encode the zone on the number of bits for example is as follows if l is the number of uh, levels then nb is log up to n say nb is 3 nb is 3 okay then it, there are 8 zones this uh, number of bits are 3 the zones are 8 and these are the corresponding zone identifications uh, being uh, shown here uh, assigning codes to zone uh, uh, we can assign the code this 000, 000 refer to minus 2 to minus 15 001 to refer to and so on this time we can assign code to the zone now uh, and one important uh, factor here uh, when a signal is quantized uh, we introduce an error and the coded uh, signal is an approximation of the actual amplitude value and the difference between the actual coded value and the referred value is said quantization error but uh, uh, more zones more bits required to encode so that is the problem so we have to have reasonable uh, bits now quantization error and signal to quantization noise ratio signals with the lower amplitude values will suffer more from quantization error as the error of delta 2 is fixed uh, normally we find that uh, if the signal and signal to noise ratio we try to see uh, for smaller amplitude of signal if I try to find we, we try to find signal to noise ratio that uh, noise will be proportional delta by 2 condition noise but if the signal amplitude is low you will get poor signal to noise ratio so uh, the quantization need not be done uh, uh, linearly you can have a non-linear quantization to alleviate this problem and goal is to keep SQ and R fixed for all values sample values and two approaches are common quantization levels follow logarithmic curve smaller deltas at lower amplitudes and larger deltas at higher amplitudes and this process we call a compounding the compression of the signal at the transmitter and then expanding the signal at the receiver uh, the the zones are fixed in height uh, okay so uh, this is about the quantization error uh, bit rate and bandwidth requirement of PCM 
uh, the bit uh, rate for PCM signal can be calculated from the number of bits uh, per sample into the sampling rate. The bit rate and be into FS sampling rate. The bandwidth required to transmit this signal depends on the type of uh, line coding used. That we'll see towards the end. The digitized signal will always need more bandwidth than the original analog signal. What is we are trying to say is that digital signal nearly really needs uh, more bandwidth and actually this is the price we pay for the robustness of the uh, digital transmission. It is not that you get all the advantages and you will not have any disadvantage. So, this is the price we have to pay for it. Important relations uh, this quantization noise NQ delta square del square over 12 signal to noise ratio SQ and R signal quantization noise ratio 3 by 2 2 by 2 n SQ and R in dB is given by this standard relations available in the books. Bit rate number of bits per sample into sampling rate uh, n into fs and uh, bandwidth for PCM for PCM signal is n into fm wherein number of bits in PCM code fm is signal bandwidth and uh, fs is sampling rate ok these are the relations. Now uh, we come to the uh, last scheme that is uh, delta modulation the here the sample is uh, compared with the previous sample and the value 1 or 0 is transmitted if it is greater or less than the previous sample value. Bandwidth required for DM is less than compared to PCM. Delta modulation needs uh, simple circuitry compared to PCM and quantization is more. Drawback uh, we can very easily these uh, are available like slope overload uh, where the magnitude of the slope uh, is greater than the slope of the staircase. So, this is the signal empty and its slope is greater than the slope of this uh, uh, selected uh, steps. So, when the magnitude of the slope is greater than the slope of staircase then this uh, slope overload comes in and granular noise signal uh, variation within step size because it is within the step size the signal is varying there is a granular noise comes in ADM strip size made adaptive to take care of the ever problem. In ADM we take care of that and differential PCM the difference between two successive samples quantized encoded and transmitted. This is useful and wise transmission. So, anyway these are the uh, important features you can uh, go in details about the delta modulation because some problems uh, come in delta modulation also. Now, uh, this is the line coding line coding uh, basically is uh, uh, important relation to uh, pulse and uh, I would say analog pulse modulations techniques. Uh, uh, we use the term like source coding techniques uh, PCM, DM, ADM they are said to be source coding technique here analog signal is converted to its digital equivalent. Uh, digital uh, baseband transmission is called a line coding. What is digital baseband transmission? That means you are transmitting the digital signal uh, by into uh, by a, at baseband frequencies. Okay, basically that means the channel is a low pass channel. So you need a shaping for the binary data, and the line coding converts binary sequence into digital signals, which is more convenient to be transmitted over a cable. Okay. To maximize bit rate reduces power transmission and reduces DC component. Now, uh, line coding could be unipolar, polar, or bipolar. We will see this various line codes formats are uh, return to 0, non return to 0, AMI, alternate mark inversion, Manchester, etc. These are the common techniques. Now, here this the figure shows uh, unipolar NRZ, non return to 0. This is Correspond to 1, this also 1 and 0 is here 0, this is 1, 0, 0, 0, this is the unipolar. Why it is unipolar? It is going in only one positive direction, you need a single supply. Okay. Now, second is a polar, polar means it is having both uh, positive and negative voltages, so this is a polar, but uh, one high voltage gives me 1 and low voltage gives me 0. Okay. This is polar in our non return to 0. Now, we have unipolar 
return to zero. Here unipolar that means uh, it is only uh, in positive direction and this you have for half half of the time the pulses uh, the amplitude is a and then it is zero. So, this corresponds to one similar this is a one and similarly that and zero is for the zero level. Now, bipolar return to zero this is bipolar return to this also return to zero because the pulse comes to a peak value and then returns to zero that is why the name is return to zero here also is return to zero ok bipolar is at return to zero and this is the Manchester type of coding here also uh, non return to zero. So, this is the here comes for one and uh, another one starting like one and so on and uh, uh, zero is zero ok. So, these uh, have been different uh, uh, schemes uh, line coding schemes. So, basically digital uh, baseband transmission is also called like a line coding and uh, it has basically low pass channel ok. So, this is uh, all about uh, this uh, video and uh, uh, we would say that uh, the pulse uh, PCM form pulse code modulation delta modulation uh, seem to be quite uh, important topics uh, with reference to the gate examination. So, you should be uh, very thorough and uh, these topics are easily available uh, in the books try to solve more of the problems. So, that so that you are able to practice better although the uh, coverage of the topic is very wide uh, we have tried to uh, concise the matter uh, in a limited uh, time. Uh, it is only uh, to give you an idea that what all topics uh, you should cover and details uh, you could see from the books I try to give uh, uh, basic uh, ideas and concepts uh, which can uh, help you in understanding because they are very important because many concepts uh, are involved and uh, uh, why uh, how we progressed from one type of uh, modulation, modulation scheme to other modulation scheme what has been the need for it and uh, why did we do it and what has been the purpose of it. I hope uh, I have done my duty and uh, I wish uh, very happy being to all my viewers. Thank you.